Hi, my name is Melinda and in this video I'm going to show you how to create some fun patterns in Digital Scrapbook Artist so that you can make your own unique backgrounds from any images or from any text. So in my embellishments tab I've put two flowers that come from the Cupid kit that comes with Digital Scrapbook Artist. Uh, this image right here that comes from the Daisy Trail website and it's one of the older Christmas freebie kits. And this right here is just a Photoshop brush. If you watched my video on YouTube showing how to use uh, Photoshop brushes in Digital Scrapbook Artist, you'll know where I got this from. Alright, so let's drag the first flower onto our screen. And what I want to do basically is create a background that has many of these images. To do that very quickly, you want to take this image and transport it into your color fill. The fastest way to do that is to have the image selected, go down to the bottom of the screen and click on Convert to Curves. When you do that, you can see that it's now filled in here. I'm just going to set this over to the side. I'm going to the top of the screen and clicking on Shapes. Now if I were to click on any of these shapes and draw a shape on screen, they will instantly fill with the image in here, which is the flower. So I'm going to click on the rectangle and I'm just going to draw a rectangle on screen and then I'm going to let go of my left mouse button and now you can see a very big flower in here. I want to go to the top of the screen and click on the fill tool while this is all still selected. Click once anywhere on my page and just hold down my left mouse button and start to drag. And when I do that you're going to see that I now have many many different images of the same flower. Now, I'm just going to make this uh, a little bit larger so that you can see this a bit be better. Um, here is my flower, and here you can see I've got this square that goes around it, and I also have a handle in the middle, a handle at the top, and a handle on the right-hand side. The handle in the middle, if you hold down your left mouse button and click on it, you can move your image around the screen. The handle on the right hand side is the one that I use the most because this one you can rotate your image or you can make it larger or you can make it smaller and then you've got the handle at the top which will not only stretch out your image but will send it from side to side and all the way back around again. So that's basically how it works. It's going to take a little bit of practice but once you use it a couple of times you're going to love it. So all I'm going to do now, because I'm not really happy with this pattern, is I'm just going to click once on my page again, and I'm just going to start dragging again until I come to a pattern that I like. Once I'm happy, I want to get rid of this box, so I'm going to click once off of my image. Now I've got a great pattern that I can use for my backgrounds, but I'm not going to stop there, I'm actually going to add to it. If you see the stem here, it just goes nowhere. You know, it looks like an S and it goes nowhere. I actually want to take the head of this flower and I want to place it on some of these stems. Let me just move this back here. To do that, it's very simple. All you do is you take your original image that you've already converted to curves, select it, go to the top of the screen and click on the eraser tool. You can now change the sizing of the eraser by either making it larger or by making it smaller. Just start erasing the section of the image that you've selected so that you get, you know, the parts that you don't want to be gone and then click on select to turn off the eraser. While this image is still selected I can go back to shapes and I'm going to actually click on the circle one and I'm just going to draw a circle. When I let go of my circle you're going to see it's going to only be the head of the flower. It's no longer going to be the stems. So if you wanted to create some unique pages that way, you could easily do that. Once you're finished with creating your shape, you're going to click on Select to turn the shapes off and then click once off of your page. Now I'm going to create another effect by taking this flower and all I'm going to do is convert it to curves and now I can delete it because it's been transported over here. So I'm going to hold down the um, delete key on my keyboard and it's now gone. Going to the top of the screen I'm going to click on shapes and I'm going to click on the quick rectangle and draw yet another rectangle on screen and here's my big flower that I just deleted but that's over here. I'm going to click on the fill tool and just holding down the left mouse button I'm just going to start dragging until I get a pattern that I'm happy with then I'm going to click off of my screen. I'm actually going to apply another pattern. I'm going to apply the starburst. 
again all I'm going to do is click on convert to curves go to the top of the screen click on shape click on the rectangle and then just draw another rectangle on screen click on the fill tool at the top of the screen click once anywhere hold down my left mouse button and just start dragging once I'm happy with this I can easily go over here and send it to the back so it's not hogging up all of the front space and I can click off of my image now at any time I can click on any of these images and I can fill them with any kind of effect I could also apply a background paper to it so that I can change the background color easily to do that all you want to do is make sure color fill is to the front and that nothing is selected and then you're just going to color fill uh, with any color you want maybe this color is nicer I'm going to go to shapes again I'm going to click on the rectangle and I'm just going to draw a rectangle now it's going to fill up with the color that I've selected so I'm just going to send it to the back if you find that the color is too bright you go over here while it's still selected and you use the slider and you move it over to the left hand side until the color is not so uh, predominant now you can easily change the color again to a different color again you can drag this a bit more and you've got yourself an interesting looking background now that can be done very quick um, I'm going to show you another quick thing. I've made a couple of interesting um, backgrounds, so let's just click on this. This one was created by typing out the words, I love you, turning it into a bitmap. That's done by typing it out, selecting it, going to tools at the top of the screen, and then clicking on convert to bitmap. Then I went over to the shapes, I drew a heart, after I um, had converted it to curves and then I uh, put the pattern in there so that was very quick over here I just used these two images and what I did was once I applied them on screen for this image right here which is the white image in the back I applied a plastic effect and for this image over here I also applied a, a very lighter plastic effect so that gave me this interesting background this is a very simple background. All I did was use this flower and the color red for the background. And for this one, I also applied a, a lighter plastic effect. Over here, what I did was I took the flower from the, um, the Photoshop brushes. And all I did was I basically stretched it out in one direction and pulled it a bit. Then when it was all stretched out, I made a copy of it and then I flipped that copy, applied it back on top, and then just applied some effects to it. So it kind of looks almost like there's a bit of snow and a little bit of water. So that's some quick ways for you to create your own backgrounds, very quick and easy, in Digital Scrapbook Artist, using text, using different um, images and again if you were using your own photographs and if they were like let's say a JPEG and you couldn't convert it to curves just turn it into a bitmap first. If you have any questions please feel free to email me. My email address is lovemyzombie at yahoo.ca